Hello and welcome to the KPHP tutorial series. And in this series of videos, we are going to be talking about KPHP 4, giving a quick overview of how it functions and how it works. And it doesn't really matter if you are watching when it's named 4.2 or 4.5, uh, as long as it's a KPHP 4. Point something, you should be good to go in this video because we're not going to be diving into the advanced. Topics we're gonna be just looking at Gate PHP, what it is, how we use it. So what we're gonna cover in this particular video is just a quick overview of Gate PHP, and then we are gonna look at how we can install Gate PHP using something called um, Composer. Now, before we do that, just a quick overview of what Gate PHP is: is that it's a PHP framework that you use to develop software in a much more secure faster, cleaner way than if you were using just plain old PHP. So that's the very quick rundown of KPHP. But if you're already here looking at this video, you probably already know what it is and you just wanna get started and see how it works. So let's do that right now and see how we can install KPHP. So the first thing that you should do is to go into kphp.org. Then you'll go into this website. This is the official KPHP website, and you can see at the time of this recording, we are at 4.1 strawberry. Um, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter if it says 4.3 or 4.5, it shouldn't matter. So as long as it's a four point something, everything in this video should still make sense. Now, it has a documentation up here with something they call the book or the cookbook, where you can read about KPHP. And it's a very good starting point, so let's just go in there, because here you can get like a, a really thorough rundown of KPHP. But what we are interested in is right here in the left-hand side, there's something called the Quick Start Guide. If you click on that, you'll just have to scroll down to something here where it says Getting KPHP. Now, this is the important part, because for a lot of people, especially if you are new to um, frameworks, it can actually be kind of difficult to understand how you actually install it, how you get it running, because it's not just opening up a um, some sort of an, a, a program or a, an, an editor and just start typing. You have to actually install it, because KPHP as a framework is just a lot of files um, and a lot of code written in PHP that you then download and start using, use all the classes and all the features that it has. So in order to download it, the easiest way is to download it using um, Composer. Now, I, I use a composer.far file, but let's just go into the Composer website first and talk about that for a bit. Because if you don't know what Composer is, this is again something like, it's a new barrier. You, you just want to learn KPHP, now you have to learn about Composer, but luckily you don't have to know a whole lot about Composer. What it is, is basically just a, it's a package manager. So what it can do is that it can download a lot of different files and just put them together in a project and sort of automate the installation process for you. So if you go into getcomposer.org, you can go up into getting started or you know if you want to read about what it is, or you can also just go up into download. Now, downloading Composer is fortunately very quick, very easy. You just basically take all this code here and, and you put the script into your terminal. When you run that, it will put a composer.far file into the directory you are currently in. So let's just see that in action. Now here I have opened up my terminal. Um, I am on a Mac, so if you're on a Windows, it'll just look slightly different, but again, you can go into Composer and just um, read the getting starting section there. But I'm on a Mac, so that's kind of what I have to, to uh, show. But in order to download Composer, the first thing is that I have to go into the directory that I want to download Composer in. So right now, if we rewrite ls on Mac, I think you write um, dir 
on a Windows, you'll get a list of all the files in the directory you are currently in. And if I write cd, which means change directory, and I use dot dot slash, it means I will go up a level. And if I write ls, I will see what is now in that folder. So it's a very crude way of navigating your OS. So right now I'll write cd dot dot slash again to go up a level, cd dot dot slash again to go up, I'll write ls. And now I am at the very top of my um, directory structure. And I want to put this composer far file into my applications folder that we see right there. So in order to go into that directory, I simply write cd and I start typing application. Then I can hit the tab button and it'll finish the rest of it. And I can press enter and then again cd change directory to applications. And remember cd dot dot slash just means go up a little. So now if I write ls, I am inside my applications folder. And I want to go into my map folder because that's where I have my local developing system. So I go into my map folder. I write ls to get a list of files again. We have the um, the htdocs file here, which is where you put all your files um, or all your, your projects in order to be able to run it on a local environment. Now, this should be um, something you know, probably. Um, if you don't, go and read about, if you're on a Mac, uh, MAMP is a great program. Uh, there are others for Windows, I think it's something called SAMP. But it's just a local um, development environment where you can have databases and you can test out your websites without having to deploy it to a server. So it's just a local server, a local um, system where you can um, develop your projects in. And in order to use that, I have to place them in the htdocs folder for MAMP. So I go into the htdocs and I write ls. Now here I have a lot of different projects in, but this is where I want to install my composer file because this is where I want to install my new project. So that's the key. So the place you want to install your new CakePHP project, you first have to navigate to that place using your terminal. Once you are there, you simply take this, you copy it, you paste it in here, you press, oh, I don't even have to press enter. And there you can see it, it's downloading something and everything's green and yellow, which is always a good thing. And it says it has successfully installed it to this directory, which is in the MAMP htdocs folder. Now, if I open up my finder window, I can now see that it has also uh, installed this particular file, the composer.far file. And this is the important file. Right, so this is, well, this is actually everything there is to installing Composer. Now you have installed Composer. And again, if you haven't done this before, all this, you know, the terminal work might seem a little difficult at first, but it's really not that hard. Just, you know, use a CD to change directory, n navigate to the place you want to install your new KPSP project in, install Composer, and once you have the Composer.far file, then you know you are good to go. If you run into any troubles, read through the Getting Started section on Composer's website, there's also a um, a part, you know, here is in installing it on Mac and Linux, here is using uh, Windows, where you can actually just run a, a setup file, it seems. So, once you have Composer installed, you are ready to install KPHP. And again, in order to install KPHP, just go into kphp.org, go up into documentation, and on the book, Left hand side, click on the quick start guide. Go down on till you get to the getting cake PHP part. And then right here, not the not the curl one, I'm not going to use that. I am gonna use uh this one. Um this command right here. Now if we have to dissect this a bit, it just says this is a PHP command. You use the composer.far file that we just created. And you create a new project. Um, it's a cake PHP project and it's version 4. Point, the newest uh, version there is. Okay, so 
this is what you need in order to download KPFP. So we simply take this, we copy it, we go back into the terminal. Now, this is important. Make sure that you are in the folder where you have this, the composer.far file, the one we just downloaded, because this is the file you're using. If you change directories and you're not in this particular directory anymore, this will not work. So make sure this is where you are. Now you simply paste this in and press enter. Now it will install KPHP in that folder. It's going to do a lot of things, install a lot of different stuff. You can see all this that it's installing, all these different things that it's kind of composing together and creating the project for you. Now, when it's done, it's going to ask you a question down, down here. It says set folder permissions and always set this to yes and then press enter. And then it sets all the necessary permissions and you are good to go. If you now go into the directory again, you can see that we have installed something called CMS. Now, this is just the name I gave this project. If we go up to where we ran the command, right here, this is the command that we ran. The last three letters says CMS. You can use that to name your project, but CMS, Content Management System, works well for this particular tutorial, but you could name it whatever you want to. That's just the, the name of the folder that it's installing KPHP in, right? And that is it. We can now close down the terminal and we can go into the CMS folder and you can see, hopefully, that you have all these different files. If your st structure, your, um, your project looks like this, then you are done. Then you have successfully installed CakePHP. It has a lot of different files. We're going to go through everything, um, or we're going to go through most of it in a later video. But if you want to see that it works, you can also fire it up in the browser. And, and we're just going to do that to quickly verify that it works. So I simply open up Matt and I start the local host server. And it fires everything up, spins the rainbow wheel a bit. And there we go. It goes in here, which is the standard site. Now on my system, the, the way I use it is localhost and then it uses the 8888. And in front of that, I can put the name of the directory in the htdocs folder that I want to go into. So in this case, the, the folder was named CMS. And if I go into that one, you can see that I get my KPHP project. It says, welcome to KPHP. This is version 4.1.6, strawberry, so it's great. Uh, everything is green, 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 all the way. We only have one thing that's red, and that's the database. And of course, it can't connect to a database because we haven't made a database yet. But everything else is green, and if your site looks like this, then you are good to go. You have now downloaded a brand new KPHP project. Now, it might seem a little difficult at first. I know I felt that way. Where I was just used to working in plain old PHP, and I could just fire up the editor and just, you know create a new project and just type away but once you get the hang of this and understand it i mean it, it gets uh, it gets easier to wrap your head around it and it's also easier to install a new project now because now we have composer we have the composer file file so if we wanted to create a new project we would just fire up the terminal go into this directory where our composer file is and just copy that um, script from the kphp site in press enter and it'll download all these files for us and set up the project and set up the permissions and make everything hook up without you having to do anything. And that's a really, really powerful um, and easy way to do it. So if you have a directory that looks like this and you can go into the page and it looks like this, then you are good to go. Um, again, the database, we're gonna set that up in the next video. If you have any problems, it could be because your PHP version is outdated. I think KPHP 4 actually requires a 7. Oh no, it requires a 7.2. Um, and I'm running 7.49. So just make sure that you are running that. Um, I think if you're on a Mac, it's sort of like built into the system, so it's a little easier. But on Windows, you might have to install it manually. But again, if you get to this part, you are done. 
and you are ready for the next video. And in the next video, we are going to set up a database. We're going to talk about what KPHP is, and we're going to start to explore all the amazing features that it has for us. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.